Wanabuzu, having outwit the evil Genebig by trickery, had at last found himself stranded in the pine tree. He crept higher, begging the tree to stretch as tall as it could. Finally, the waters stopped just below Wanabuzu's nose. He saw a lot of animals swimming around and asked them all, in turn, to dive down and bring up a little earth so that he and they might live. The loon tried, then the otter, and the beaver, but all of them were drowned before they could bring up any earth. Finally, the muskrat went down, but he too passed out as he came to the surface. Poor little fellow, said Wanabuzu, you tried hard, but he saw that the muskrat clenched something in his paws. A few grains of sand and a bit of mud. Wanabuzu breathed on the muskrat and restored his life, then took the mud and rolled it in his hands. Soon he had enough for a small island, and he called the other animals to climb out of the water. He sent a huge bird to fly around the island, and enlarge it. The bird was gone for four days, but Wanabuzu said that it was not enough and sent out an eagle to make the land larger. Having created the world, Wanabuzu said, here is where my aunts, my uncles, and all of my relatives can make their homes. Then Wanabuzu cut up the body of one of the evil spirits and fed part of it to the woodchucks, who had once saved his life. Into a hollow, he put the rest of the food, and when some of it turned into oils or fats, Wanabuzu told the animals to help themselves. The woodchuck was told to work only in the summer times. In the winter, he could rest in the snug den and sleep, and each spring he would have a new coat. Before that, most of the animals had lived on grass and other plants, but now they could eat meat if they wished. The rabbit came and took a little stick with which he touched himself high on the back. The deer and other animals that ate grass all touched themselves on their flanks. Wanabuzu told the deer he could eat moss. The bear drank some of the fat as did the small animals who ate meat. All those who sipped on the fat were turned to spirits and are the guardian spirits of every person who fasts. Wanabuzu then named the plants, herbs, and roots and instructed the people in the use of these plants. Wanabuzu's grandmother, Nokomas, it also had a lodge somewhere on that land.